Hi, I'm Frank Cabri with Centrify, and welcome to another Centrify Chalk Talk. Uh, I'm joined here by David McNeely. Welcome, David. And today we're going to talk about virtualization. Uh, we spent a fair amount of time in the last Chalk Talk talking about virtualization in a VMware environment, and clearly today with uh, analyst estimates that north of 40% of the application workload is virtualized today, we're seeing that drive a more heterogeneous environment. And David, maybe that's a good place to start, just understanding what are the, the methods available today for organizations to virtualize their environments? Yeah, so there's quite a few options to, available to customers nowadays. Um, certainly VMware gets a lot of attention because they, they market you know, specifically to virtualization and, and the benefits of the virtualized environments. Yep. But a lot of the customers that have existing infrastructure, existing systems from either IBM with their AIX operating system or HPUX or Solaris, um, all three of those also have their own level of virtualization. And, both, and there's a couple of different categories of that as well. So you, you have uh, this notion of uh, virtualized machine, which is uh, an, an instance of a machine living on top of the, the, the base physical box. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> but what the operating system vendors have been promoting and, and doing a little bit more work on is uh, app operating system level virtualization. And it has some benefits to it because it's not um, as big. Um, you know, if you, if you think about a, a, taking a server and you virtualize that and it creates a set of files that are on the file system, uh, operating system level virtualization results in much less uh, data required to be stored on a disk if I can inherit, if you will, a mm -hmm. lot of the portions of that particular operating system into this new virtual uh, OS. Uh, the same goals are, are there for, uh, you know, the, the vir move to virtualization. It's, you know, reuse the hardware that I already have. Yeah. Uh, let me set up a new application and isolate it from the other applications that I may be running on that same system. Um, and at the same time, take advantage of, uh, you know, the cost savings in hardware. and. Uh, set up a security environment for that new a application that's running on that same box. You talked about inheriting uh, you know, some of the capabilities in the, in the base OS itself. Tell me a little more about that. Are you talking about security specifically or configuration or all of the above? Well, the inheritance that we're talking about is uh, when you take an operating system and you want to virtualize a machine on top of that same operating system, it's, it's like you're able to take the binary executables that live on the hard drive and simply reuse those. Mm -hmm. Um, IBM invented this way back in the day on the mainframe. They've been doing this for a long time where they'd have one operating system that was installed yet several virtual execution environments. And that's really what this is more analogous to is an execution environment that's set up for a specific application. But in order to make it um, feel like a virtual machine and operate like that and to be able to delegate management of that application to the business owners that manage that particular application, you need to set up uh, security such that I can enable the business owner to manage who can log on to his system and keep that independent of the base mm -hmm. post OS. So it starts looking like a hybrid where you end up with you know, some parts of the operating system that we inherit or we get to use, the executables, but the identity of the machine, his IP address, uh, which users can log in, all of that is maintained completely independent uh, for that virtualized operating system. Okay, so in a in a Solaris environment, and I have to make sure I don't say say Sun all the time because now they're part of Oracle. Tell tell us about the components that exist there and the products that 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 is offered in the Solaris platform for for virtualization. Right. So they they actually offer quite a few different things, but let's start at the hardware layer. There's um, logical domains uh, or LDOMs is a short term for that, uh, where you have the ability to take a physical machine, a Spark uh, processor, in and set up a virtualized uh, Spark system on mm -hmm. top of that. Uh, in, in that instance, you'll end up seeing independent installations of Solaris operating system on that machine itself. I see. So that's very analogous to what we've seen with uh, you know, the VMware hypervisor uh, type environment where you set up uh, virtual machines and I can install different operating mm -hmm. systems. And again, since it's a Spark processor and there's other Linux distributions that support the Spark processor, you could be running Solaris, you could be running a Linux uh, on that same piece of hardware. But uh, if we start looking at uh, the Solaris operating system specifically, they have this notion of containers and uh, the ability to set up a, an individual container for uh, application execution. So you'll end up installing the Solaris operating system on the, the base hardware, and then on top of that Solaris operating system, you can define and configure a container for each application. And that sets up a, a new operating environment. It's going to have its own new host name, its own IP address. Um, and it'll also contain its own set of users that are authorized to log into that system. 
Right, so essentially I've got several guest OS participating in the Solaris environment, potentially running on top of a, of a bare metal hypervisor. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the difference though is that uh, when we start talking about operating system virtualization is that the, once the operating system is virtualized like that and we create these uh, virtual guest OSs, they will all be the same uh, version of OS. So when you look at managing the operating system, patching it, uh, and making changes to it like that, or installing software, you do that in the global uh, container, global zone. Mm -hmm. That's where you end up installing the operating system and make changes to the, the operating system itself, given that all the other guests that are running on top of that simply reuse the executables that were installed when I install the base operating system. I see. So are there, are there specific security best practices that you're seeing customers uh, implement when they, when they go to this type of environment? Certainly the, uh, the fact that I've created a new virtual machine that has its own security uh, context, um, its own set of users and authorizations of who can log into it, mm -hmm. means that I'm going to need to manage that and if I have got, uh, you know, a security infrastructure set up, um, in our environment we, we join these machines to Active Directory so that we can control which users are authorized to log into individual right. uh, systems. That means that for each of these containers I would need to do the same thing, join that uh, container to Active Directory. It's going to have its own unique host name, its own unique set of users uh, that we're going to authorize to log into that system. On the host system itself, the security of the guests is one of the primary issues that needs to be dealt with. Yeah. And that really has to do with the fact that we've got uh, you know, so many different departments potentially that are sharing the same physical machine. And if that's the case, I've got different sets of administrators that need to be able to, let's say, start, stop their virtual machines. And I need to be able to control their actions on the host that's hosting all these guests. So uh, being able to have a privilege management system in place, have a delegation system in place is going to be really important on managing that host and the security that's on the host itself. And then as you delegate all those rights, uh, those, those rights are exercised by those individuals through their active directory credentials, right? Right, yeah. right. So David, we've spent a lot of time talking about the context and some of the components of, of this environment, specifically in a Solaris virtualized environment. Now, obviously that's a, a mature operating system. Doesn't it natively provide some of these security capabilities that, that customers require? Well, it, it certainly provides, uh, you know, controls around which users can log in. Um, and if you're in a, a mostly Solaris environment or a homogeneous Solaris environment, uh, you more than likely will be using the, the directory service that comes with this Solaris operating mm -hmm. system. And there's this notion of role-based access control that does provide more granularity with respect to rights that users get once they log into the system. And um, that does a great job on that particular operating system. The challenge is that what we're seeing is that most of our customers have multiple uh, versions of operating systems in-house, whether it be you know, a mixture between Windows systems and Solaris, or Solaris and Red Hat or SUSE, yeah. um, or VMware systems. They've got a lot of different machines in-house. And once you start going beyond one or two different operating systems, or two or three, then you end up with the need of uh, you know, trying to design a management infrastructure that supports you know, that kind of heterogeneity. Yeah. And that, that's really what our tools are designed to do with uh, our direct authorized product, is to be able to provide that kind of role-based access control uh, that is tied back to your Active Directory accounts, but yet uh, completely independent of what's built into the operating system. Centrify obviously brings that to the table in terms of centrally managing all these different OSs and the rights and who can access what. Mm -hmm. the, the, um, the need to report on who did what or, or audit what happened on a, on a specific instance, whether that be a virtual instance or a physical server, is that something that is included in the Centrify product as well? Absolutely. Um, you know, because of the fact that we have all of the user accounts that are authorized to log into these Unix uh, systems, Linux systems, is uh, stored and managed inside Active Directory. We create this uh, notion called zones that allows us to group together systems and grant access to individual machines or groups of machines that make sense based on the business. Mm -hmm. And uh, since it's all stored in the directory, we get to very easily go back and report on that and basically show for an Active Directory person, um, we can identify and show which systems they have authorizations to log into those machines. Um, <clears throat> we've also built uh, audit tools that are designed to record the user session. You can sort of think of it like a VCR or TiVo type device for right, you know, the I Unix session. Go back to this user and this, this specific server and see what happens. Absolutely. Um, actually, one of the things that's more valuable there is uh, from an auditor's point of view is that I get to go back and um, correlate all these events across all the different systems. Mm -hmm. So 
if we're recording across everything that's in the data center, I now have audit logs for David McNeely across that Solaris machine, uh, this uh, Solaris container or that Linux system. I see. And we get to go back and show, you know, chronologically, here's the set of systems David logged on to, here's the commands that he executed, and, and if we want to, replay those. I see, so I can set some filters on who I want to who I want to audit and what I want to audit and, and pull right. that data only. Great, great. David, since this is a chalk talk, maybe you could draw a simple picture for us on, on how these components lay out in a, in a real deployment. Um, so why don't I start with uh, showing, you know, basically if we have a, a Spark system um, in the data center, and one of the things that I want to do is to, to virtualize operating systems on top of it. So um, you start out with the system and you need to install the operating system. This is one of the things that's uh, different um, between this and, let's say, you know, any of the other hypervisor-based mm -hmm. systems. Because I do install the operating system, and this identifies the, the computer itself. Once I've got the Solaris operating system installed, then I can create uh, a new container. Um, <clears throat> and there's a couple of different kinds of configurations, but we'll just keep it simple and just uh, act as if they're all the same for now. Now, containers are somewhat similar to a, a virtualized guest on, it that, is. on that environment. It's, a, it's basically like going into the Solaris operating system and saying create a new container. Um, and they use the zone CFG, uh, zone admin commands to do that. Um, and there's a couple of different versions. There's a sparse zone and there's a, there's a whole zone. And basically all that really determines is how much of the base operating system does it share. Um, <clears throat> for this purposes, we're just talking about virtual operating systems on top of Solaris 10. Since each zone is, is a, a copy of the binary executables of this, this is also going to be Solaris 10, right? There, I can't, mm -hmm. that can't be Solaris 9 and it can't be Red Hat or Linux or whatever. That's virtualization on top of the hardware. So that's, that's the difference between operating system virtualization and this. But I can create any number of these um, and depending on the horsepower of the machine mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. So I end up with these uh, zones that get created. Um, I'm drawing backwards here. And uh, end up with uh, quite a few of these. Um, <clears throat> so in this environment, this machine has got an IP address and a set of users that can log on to it. And the users that log on to this that gain privilege are the ones that can create, start, stop, delete these other zones. Well, once I've created a zone, it has its own notion of users and its own uh, user accounts of people that get to log in to this one. So now from a network perspective, I've got five systems on the mm -hmm. network as opposed to just one. I see. And <clears throat> from an administrative point of view, I now have five computers that I need to manage. Right, so um, how, would, how would I... Were independent. Right, so how would a Centrify solution maybe overlay on top of, uh, top of this? The easiest way to think of it is um, when we take the machine itself and join it into Active Directory, um, we end up creating a computer account for this machine. So if this was the host, I've got you know com the first computer in the directory. Once these are created, if I want to control which users can log into them, I need to have them join the directory as well. And so we'll end up with five computer accounts over an active directory mm -hmm. that represents these computers. But we introduced, uh, in order to control access a little bit more granularly, we introduced this notion of zones, um, a centrified zone that's designed as a logical grouping of systems. Um, we did that because we knew that uh, this system may be run and managed by the IT staff, and this may be um, a container for an application mm -hmm. for, let's say, the HR department. So if that's for HR, this is for finance, um, and this is for dev development, um, and maybe I've got another one for uh, just production systems. You've got four different groups of people that need to access those systems. HR grows, and we add another uh, container for them, Got to have a different name for it, E. Um, and we end up with uh, quite a few more systems over here in production. Mm -hmm. So as these things expand, we need to group them together. So we'll end up uh, grouping together this as a zone, uh, that as a zone, uh, and we end up with different groupings. Inside Active Directory, we have the ability to control which users log on to each of those particular zones. So now, we end up with one more challenge here. So uh, this is the access control side of it. Mm -hmm. There's another challenge which really has to do with this uh, Solaris system underneath because <clears throat> in, the, 
if we wanted to grant the HR administrators the rights to turn it on and off their own server, I need to let them log on to this uh, base By operating default, system. default, they're getting underneath. access to that base, base operating system. Um, well, explicitly, we have to grant that permission. But once we grant them permission to log on to this, the person or the account that has privilege to turn these on and off is root. So I have to give them root permissions. And the problem with that is that uh, we want to try to, at least for secure environments, we want to control who can log on as root. So if we're restricting root access uh, to this system and I'm requiring users to log on with their own accounts, mm -hmm. I need them to run a privilege elevation in order to get to the command that lets me start and stop and mm -hmm. restart or reconfigure these uh, zones um, and grant that very granularly to the person and what they need to do. So again, with our direct authorize, we end up storing policy um, in the directory as just data inside this Active Directory environment um, using the authorization manager store. Um, and we'll just call it authorization policy. Um, they get stored inside Active Directory as just data objects. The policies here for privilege rights are linked to a user or to an Active Directory group. Mm -hmm. So we can very easily give people the rights for the HR administrators and give them a specific HR admin policy. And when they log into this set of systems, they get that policy. When they log into this set of this uh, host underneath, they'll get that same policy. And we can give them the rights to be able to do the start stop commands very specific to these two to their virtual zone. machines. Yeah. yeah, great stuff. It, 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 anything yeah. else that you want to highlight around the um, the Centrify solution in, in a Solaris environment? Well, the other thing you know we were talking about is uh, audit capabilities, mm -hmm. and with auditing. <clears throat> what's probably most important is to audit this host itself um, because this host has the ability, um, again, if we look at you know what files make up this particular system, yeah. there are files that this main host operating system is controlling access to. Um, so if, if I wanted to, as a, you know, if I'm trying to break into the systems and I'm trying to steal the data, um, I could either try to break in directly to this machine or this machine over the wire with their IP addresses or I could break into this system and I've got you know, all of these mm -hmm. computers. Because all of these represent uh, files that are on the hard drives here uh, under the file system of that machine. So it, it becomes a little bit easier uh, to get more systems if I just simply break into the, the host itself. Mm -hmm. So from that perspective, we end up running our audit tool as a, a way to capture the audit trails of the users that are logging in um, as a way to make sure that you know, if somebody executes a command with privilege, we have the ability to see what they did and then go back and replay that. And of course, we can do the same thing on all of the guests. You know, it, just, it depends on the data, right? So in development, it's probably not quite as important, but certainly the financial systems, the HR systems are holding uh, sensitive material that we do need to protect, um, given that they've probably got credit card data in the financial systems and social security numbers in the HR system. Right, I would think that'd be important for PCI and SOX and right, HIPAA right. compliance, right? Okay, thanks, David. Okay. Great, thanks again, David. We spent some time today talking about you know, all the different ways to virtualize your environment from bare metal hypervisors to, to uh, native capabilities that are in operating systems such as Solaris. Thanks again for joining us today. And uh, again, I'm Frank Cabri alongside David McNeely, and we'll see you next time.